Hi, my name is Mary Vodder with Medical Device Academy, and today I want to talk to you about a new guidance segment that the FDA just released for predetermined change control plans. So first of all, what is a PCCP? It is a predetermined change control plan for artificial intelligence or machine learning enabled device software functions. It's abbreviated as CCP or MLDSF. Basically what this is, is this is a plan that you can include in your marketing submission that will pre-authorize future device modifications that you intend to make to your device. So this would be if you are submitting a 510K for a device that has an AI or ML algorithm as part of a software function. And if you know that you're gonna be making certain changes to this, or you'd intend to make certain changes to this, then you can get those reviewed by the FDA without having to have completed the validations or without having to have it implemented that will allow you permission to make those changes after you receive your authorization or your, your clearance. What types of changes would qualify to be included in a PCCP? So currently there are three guidance documents that relate to evaluating changes and determining when a new pre-market submission is required. So those three guidance documents would still apply and anything relating to MLDSF changes that would require a new 510K per those guidance documents would be the subject of the PCCP. So those are still the first steps in evaluating changes. And then any of the changes that would fall towards a new marketing submission is what you would cover in your PCCP. There are a few different examples of the types of changes that that would qualify here. So the first of which is if you want to improve the performance of your device and update your labeling to reflect the improved performance. So that would be if you are adding additional training data sets and increasing your sensitivity or um, increasing your performance in some way, then you could get the FDA's pre-authorization through review of your PCCP such that once you are able to do that retraining and improve your performance, you would be able to update your claims and your labeling to reflect that. <clears throat> the second would be if you are expanding the scope of compatible accessories. So if you have a software function that was trained on one specific camera or one specific ultrasound or one specific set of parameters, and you're able to add additional accessories um, that are also compatible and you're able to demonstrate performance using those other accessories, then you could clear that through a PCCP with the FDA um, so that you don't have to submit a new submission once you want to add those additional accessories. Uh, the last example here is if you intend to optimize performance on a patient subpopulation. So that could be if you have a, a specific group that you want to uh, identify specific performance or improve specific performance, but you might not have the comprehensive data set yet in order to be able to do that, but you will be able to once you have that data and expand your claims to those specific subpopulations, then you could clear that through the FDA in a PCCP as well. So those are just a few examples. The guidance document lists a couple more there, um, but basically those are all changes that would normally require a new submission, but you would be able to get pre-authorization for those through a PCCP. So PCCPs cover both locked and adaptive algorithms. And so you might be wondering what the difference is. So a locked algorithm is a software function that involves human input, action review, or decision-making before it is implemented. So once the algorithm is designed, it cannot be changed unless you modify the source code. Whereas adaptive or automatic algorithms implement the changes without human intervention. The code is written such that the algorithm adjusts its behavior according to changing input conditions. Um, and this type of algorithm is designed to recognize patterns in the input data and then adjust its processing accordingly. So both of these are covered within the scope of what can be, um, what can be proposed in a CCP. Um, so if it's a locked or adaptive, then you would just need to make sure you're specifying exactly which it is um, in your detailed description. So what are the basic elements of what needs to be included in a PCCP? 
The first is, of course, a detailed description of these intended modifications. That involves listing all the specific changes and what those changes are and why those changes are appropriate. Um, you will identify if it's a locked or um, an adaptive algorithm with that as well. And the guidance identifies quite a few other details that they'd like about those modifications as well. The next would be the modification protocol that describes the verification and validation activities, including predefined acceptance criteria for these changes. So that's maybe the most important part because the FDA needs to buy in and ensure that your testing is going to support those changes and those claims and that it's it it is they are pre-evaluating your testing so that once you do go to make these modifications, as long as you're meeting everything that you outlined in the CCP, then the FDA is confident that that will support your, your modification. Lastly, they would like to see an impact assessment identifying the benefits and risks that are introduced by the changes. And that would be for each different modification. And again, the guidance document goes into detail for each of these things. And we have also written a blog available on our website that goes into even more detail on these elements and more information about how to implement a CCP into your quality control, your quality management system change control processes. Um, and if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We'd be more than happy to help you interpret and apply the PCCP guidance. Thank you.